It's the whole process of, the, of this project that is worth all the effort. And of course, in Point Barrow, standing there on the beach and this place surrounded by ice was an incredible feeling to finally get to a point where it really is going south. <laughs> I mean, this sounds stupid, but, <laughs> but uh, that's the direction I want to go or we want to go. It was, it was kind of a relief. But on the other hand, um, there's still a couple of things to do um, and still a lot of challenges to come. This was just the beginning, but that's the experience and uh, I can't, can't think of anything better to do right now than this project. Barrow is a little town in the very far north of Alaska. There's nothing north of that point in Alaska, except at some point that comes the North Pole. And between that point and the North Pole is only ice. And you can perfectly see all that. Like you get to this place and it's surrounded by ice. It's, it's an incredible place, really impressive. I didn't expect that town of Barrow and the tip out there would be that impressive for me. It was really a special place. Although there, it's so remote, it has a, a certain spirit in there. It was a really cool experience to be up there. And especially as Everett, um, a teacher from Barrow, texted me before on Facebook. He found my contact and my, my project there. He was actually following me since a couple of months uh, because of paragliding. He's a paramotor pilot. And he texted me and he said, yeah, he's going to take care of us up there and he's going to help us with all the logistics up there. And he was really cool. It seems to be summer for them. It's a week of summer here only. That's what, what we heard. So they have the leggings out and the sport shoes and they're playing volleyball. It's incredible. We, we almost can't believe it. It's nice though. We organized um, a little, uh, little bonfire on the beach and we enjoyed the midnight sun out there and we had a really good time. It was a, an excellent start of the trip. It's my first of June. There is a tradition in Austria that we make a bonfire because it's the longest day um, of the year. And um, we were joking about coming here to Point Barrow and having a bonfire. <laughs> See that fog? That's Point Barrow in the fog. We flew out to the starting point of the trip and then came back here only a couple of miles back in. Five minutes later the fog came in. It's pretty cold actually. I mean 70 something degrees north. So I think now we're gonna be stuck here and we're gonna stay here for the night maybe. When you leave Barrow, you're still surrounded by ice and slowly as we travel south, we could see how the landscape changes, how the temperature changes and obviously the ice is not there anymore and then the mountains come. The landscape and the scenery there is just incredible, really. The mountains are so perfectly shaped, especially for paragliding. We, we stopped a couple of times to do uh, short flights. I went for hike and fly and soaring and lots of cool stuff so many places where you can land you keep I love to fly the paraglider. I enjoy this feeling of sitting just outside in the, in the air, <laughs> like feeling the air all the time, going up in thermals and being very slow, being able to play with the landscape. Of course, I enjoy both disciplines the same way. I love to fly the Super Cup. I love to have the challenge of landing in remote places and travel with that plane, but 
Also, when I arrive there and I, it's all quiet and I take my paraglider and I just play with the wind, it's, it's a totally different thing, but it's perfect, the combination. It's already almost 11 at night, the sun is still very high. I think we're gonna spend the night here and it's an amazing place. Uh, it's just a big playground. Not a big playground, that's I think the fifth big playground that we visited today. You keep blowing me out, I keep holding you in I keep asking myself, oh, why do you still hurt? It's the moment that lasts five hours here, from midnight to five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Guy died and then and everything is here. His photo camera, his books, a photo of him, I guess, or his family at least. Well, it's time to go to bed. Yeah, sun is set. Sun is set. <laughs> <laughs> time to go to bed. Oh, it's 1.30. <laughs> it was actually hard to sleep there because it was so beautiful and the sun was always out and it's it's a, con a continuous sunset and on top of all that it was the perfect paragliding ridge like i have never experienced a perfect flying side like this <laughs> really for soaring anywhere else before it was just amazing and i could fly all the way out to to the point there and incredible, like really an incredible experience to do that. It's, I think there's nowhere in the world you can experience that in the middle of the night. When the day is longer than the night The road ahead is clear and in the light is clear We're gonna cook this fish now on the bushfire. Life won't wait, my dear. You have a tendency to go low and slow. I've flown other planes, even not big planes, but you fly with those other planes and you, you kind of always want to fly high and straight. And this plane is different. You can just take it and like fly all the valleys. Then you see a place to land. Yeah, one other stop we did on the way down south. Um, is a place called Flat. A hundred years ago, there were uh, 6,000 people working there and living there. And the interesting thing about places like this in Alaska is that they leave everything behind. So that whole place is like a museum. It's incredible. All the stuff, like, it's just like going back in time. Okay, how much do you want? <laughs> so this was the bank probably. We found the safe and the checkbooks. The store that is still the same like it was when they left uh, 60, 70 years ago. And so we saw some really cool stuff there. We saw the old the old uh, notes that the guy took in his in his shop. Each one of these books is for one day here at the store. And it goes through and identifies who came in, what they bought, and every day every person that bought something during that day. Is that unbelievable? If you come in with the plane and you see what was going on there, it's like a huge a huge area that they went through digging for gold because Flat is actually a gold mine town. So 6,000 people were looking for gold there. And they had those huge machines that like, were just digging through the dirt and making its way through the whole valley. Gold has a, a tendency to attract people's attention and get them to do crazy things in the middle of nowhere. 
we're soon off to Canada, next country. So you should better subscribe to this channel because it's going to be really exciting in the future.